sorry. <laughs> this is this is the second podcast. This is the third one. No, 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 no. I mean, this is the second one where I've just stared at you <laughs> as we started. I, I mean, it's good shit. It's I thought you were gonna shit. do the big slip. The uh, the big slip. I mean, the big slip. <laughs> the big slip up. The big slip. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to uh, Human Pasta Podcast. This is episode three. I'm Derek Mola. And I'm Quentin Bell. And I'm glad you, I was just going to say, I was just thinking, when are we going to do it? The, what, the human? <laughs> the intro. Yeah, because I was like, we're not, we're going to actually introduce ourselves yeah, in the beginning this time. Every time it's like three or four minutes. And in. we have officially decided that it's Human Pasta. I know in the in the podcast, or you've watched the Let's Plays, we hadn't really figured um, out what we were going to do for a name. Obviously, if you look at the channel, <laughs> we, it's very if clear. You found we, us. we decided on human hey, pasta. And uh, cool, cool, cool side note, cool fun fact. Uh, we're the first result if you look up human pasta. Like, <laughs> like, is, uh, uh, I mean, who else is looking up? If you look up human pasta podcast, we're number one. I'm dead serious, dude. I looked it up, and it's the only... I mean, after that, it's a bunch of random, like, I mean, filthy Frank, blah, 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 stupid bullshit. Who cares? Yeah, there's the, yeah, the, the filthy Frank human ramen sketch and all that. Yeah, yeah right, right, right. dumb, I mean, stupid. who else is typing in human pasta? Who else is naming Who else is so original and amazing as, as Derek Moe and Quentin Bell? I, I can't imagine That's anybody true. else. We're so fucking, We're two beautiful bastards. We're going to so do better. Cool, Come over here and kiss my foot. Don't fight Kiss me. My foot. Don't fight me. You I don't get need to, to fight you. Though, I'm one. already the winner. <laughs> I'm already the winner. I'll let you choose which foot. Yeah, I've got four. Um, I'm a centaur. I never mentioned that. They're actually hooves. Sorry. I get... <laughs> I'll shut up. <laughs> Quentin will go on these little like <laughs> things where he's like, "I'm a centaur. I'm a dragon." You said to your mommy that like just five seconds ago, <laughs> "I'm an android," and you're like, <laughs> I "Yeah." I need to read. I don't eat food. I, I charge my batteries. <laughs> yeah. My mother graciously made us dinner tonight, which was very friendly and kind of her. As good as fajitas. I got a nice mom. Yeah. What can I say? Fajitas and Rita's all, without the Rita's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've got some Quentin. orange sodas in. Hmm? How was your day? <laughs> Dude, my day was actually pretty all right. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I woke up to, a, to a, a phone call from a guy asked me to come in and work for him, and I was like... Well, hello. Hey, look at me. <laughs> well, hello. I'm sitting over here trying to set up interviews, and I got called to one. Mm-hmm. Hold on. I got to, like, back and, like, whatever. So unprofessional. <sighs> Listen, <laughs> you know, this is the real shit. Yeah. This is the real, this is the real pasta. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is the real penne. The with, real meat With red pasta. sauce. <laughs> no, I, this dude from Massasoit, honestly, uh, I probably shouldn't even be saying this, because, uh, he introduced himself and I forgot his name immediately because that <laughs> I mean, he's really going to listen to this podcast. <laughs> well, I don't know. I feel bad. We'll co- we'll, you know, it's a, it's a college maybe. I don't know. Whatever. No, I feel bad. I, I always do this. Whenever I get on the phone with some folks, um, it, I guess I don't always do this. This always happens to me. I'll be in the middle of something and I'll get a phone call for like the other day I was in the library looking for a book for the, I was, I think I talked about it last podcast, the Aeneid. Um, I was looking for that because um, for the necromancer script for the, for the necromancer movie, which I, I'm still I'm still uh, pumping pumping on uh, every now and again. I'm I'm tapping away on that. I got a phone call from a, a dog kennel because I've been applying everywhere, and and I like dogs, so I've been applying to like dog daycares and stuff like that. So I got a call from them while I was like in the library, like about to check out. Like oh shit, uh, hello, oh yeah, I'm ready. Uh. Like I forgot everything, uh, and I had. If I'm on the phone with someone, I need to have a pen and paper in front of me so I can write things down because for whatever reason, all of my mental focus is on being on the phone and hear, trying to pay attention to what they're saying. So none of that mental energy is being expended on remembering anything. Today, I was working on, admittedly, a personal project. It was uh, I was making some cool boots for a cosplay, uh, these cool like leather wrap um, boots for... Um, for for actually two costumes, it was one is for this um, the Nerevar from Morrowind, uh, or a version of the Nerevar. I I have this one costume I made based on the some of the concept art for the Netch leather armor and the um, like night blade or not night blade, what's the night blade? One of the stealth classes has a really cool concept art thing with it. 
I based it off of that, and I've also got a druid that I've been working on that I based off of a, a Dungeons and Dragons character. But anyway, I'm working on that, and I got a call from from the dude, and I was just like totally cut off guard, so I forgot his name. Well, that was a really long winded story to explain why I <laughs> forgot his name. But anyway, I forgot his name. He just called me out of the blue and was like, "Your resume came across my desk," and I was like, "All right, that's not ominous." <laughs> <laughs> who who gave you my resume? Where did you get it? But uh, honestly, I'm yeah. You know, I mentioned this in the first podcast. I'm kind of doing nothing, so I'm like, "Fuck yeah, dude! You want me to stitch for you? Hell yeah! Beauty and the Beast, whatever." So it's not official, obviously, but they want me to come in next week at some point to um to stitch for them, to stitch for the designers, so they can see like how much work they can give me, I guess, or if they even want me. Um, so that that was part of my day. And then you came over, and we, uh, 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 we oh, shot oh, a sketch. Oh, oh, we filmed a sketch. We yeah. finally filmed a sketch. We were supposed to do it, I mean, we explained in the last podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and all the gameplay footage. Well, not actually, it wasn't in the podcast. I think it was the the, the gameplay. The, sh- the shadow. Yeah, and the, and the shadow of the Colossus. The first I think episode. we I think we mentioned the batteries in the podcast. I, I mentioned the batter yeah, we mentioned the batteries in the podcast and then I the S D card wasn't working, but yeah. I finally I bought a new S D card, so we filmed we were able to film a sketch today. De- Derek's a hero. Derek Derek not only did that, but Derek also edited all the gameplay footage and uh, added the intro hard. and outro. Oh <laughs> uh, well I but, know. but it was more than I did. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you're bringing hard. a lot to the table. Yeah, I did the intro and I mean I just I looked up a, a royalty free oh, okay. stock footage of like pasta. Dude, Mitch, Dude, Mitch Murder makes some some. Uh, we may have to contact him, but Mitch Murder makes some really nice like little little musical bites that I think. Are and then yeah, the music is. I looked up elevator music, and that's like a very popular one that mm-hmm. like always comes up in videos. So I just put that as the intro. It was good shit. It I was really, good shit. I honestly, I didn't see it until you did it. I really liked the uh, the just like pasta being poured into a dish. Mm-hmm. I, we, I mean, I imagine. We'll probably update it. I mean, it's point. a definitely it's definitely a placeholder. I, I, w- I would like to think of maybe something more creative stuff. Like maybe we make our own type of thing. Yeah, or yeah, and especially as, for all the thumbnails and stuff. As a placeholder, I think it's a really good placeholder, though. Yeah. If if it has to be a placeholder, like I I think it actually looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. I like it. It's funny. It's human pasta. I mean, it's. I really, although, I would if we can get an artist on it, or if I can get. Maybe I'll take a crack at it. I mean, I have a my friend. Uh, shout out to Xavier Maurice. He's probably gonna listen to this. Um, he's an amazing graphic uh, artist, oh, graphic design oh, artist, and um, I'm, I'm sure he'd be willing to make something for us uh, for the right price or a big high five for cheap or whatever for a big kiss. I'm sure he'd <laughs> a just big sloppy appreciate kiss a big sloppy for, for kiss these on the two lips. beautiful bastards. Yeah. Beautiful but, uh, badgers. No, yeah, he could. I was gonna ask him originally. I just didn't want to do it right away, and no, I dude. keep forgetting to ask him. So, Xavier, if you're listening to this, I'm gonna ask you soon. Xavier, if you're listening to this, you have a cool name. Yeah, I hope that's enough. <laughs> He'll probably. I would love to have him on the. Yeah, yeah. On the show dude, as a. As that's a. a guest. That's that's a that's an interesting thing. We want to have guests. <laughs> We're I mean, gonna have guests. Sh- I feel like we should build up to guests. Yeah, we I mean, this is our third episode, but... We don't get to know... We should get to know us first. <laughs> What's no one but no one? <laughs> Come on. In this, in this world, in this fast-flying, hip-zapping, doo-dah world of lasers and lightning fast yeah, yeah, yeah. and moving quick and... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just a... It's just a Hip hop and a bopping world full of wacky dacky doo dads. Yeah, here's some of these things books. in the sketches. <laughs> in the sketch that we just did. I'm on that energy now. Yeah. Dude, a- every time we stop. So basically. No, I don't want to explain the sketch. Okay, well. Let them watch it. Then I won't explain anything. I well, will... actually, you know what? They're going to see the sketch first. I was going to say this. Yeah, is so come never, out never mind. Yeah. I will say this, though. I, without getting too far into it, every time we turn the camera off, <laughs> I would think of like 12 more different little. Uh, Little improv like things. And yeah, I was well, like, yeah, because the sketches we did a lot of improv, and you'll you know, you'll see we did a lot, a lot of improv. improv. Yeah, it was the all entire. It, it was, was all improvised. <laughs> but it was tough. We only have there one. was one thing we didn't improvise, and that was the song. The song, and, and that then, was and the end. <laughs> the end. I came up with the line. We only have one camera, yeah. So it's tough. I wish we if we had three cameras, that would have been great. Or like yeah, have two cameras camera. pointed at each other, so then we could actually. I'll go scavenge. Play off of each other. Go scavenge for one. Go yeah. dumpster diving. Dude, I, my uncle 
has cameras, nice little cameras, mm-hmm. and Nathan has cameras that he's yeah. been selling. Shut up, Laurel. Sorry, my <laughs> Facebook just went off. I figured it was going to get picked up anyway, so I was going to call it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, go keep going. No, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. I don't know where else I was going to go Fuck. with it. But, but uh, I hope you guys enjoy the sketch because... Uh, it, it it's it's fun. It's real I, goofy. I like doing sketches. It's real and goofy. We have a ton more ideas. It's so real goopy. Expect more. It's real gooey. <laughs> it's real gooey and gaffy. Um, uh, I want to talk about. Yeah, I don't have any topics planned out. Well, you, I said your, you'd said your day. I have a couple. Oh, right. I have a couple, to- I have a couple topics thinking of. Because you you had a crazy day today, didn't you? I had a crazy day. I didn't. Have, I had a. My day wasn't super crazy. We both had crazy days. But yesterday was the crazy. Yesterday day. was it? Okay. I thought you I went to the. the I went to the doctors yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to talk about getting anxiety medication because I bom, had bom, bom. Bom. the big A word, right under ass. <laughs> <laughs> Asiety. Ass anxiety about ass. Yeah, when you have anxiety about your own butt. Oh boy, um, what a sad state. But uh, yeah, because I've suffered for it from it for a very long time. I just haven't really done anything about it except I mean, I've I've done like everything. I've done meditation. I've done eating better. I've done exercise. I've done I've read a bunch of books. I've um, I've done like CBD oil and everything I, outside of getting a prescribed yeah I, I, I mean I'm, I'm going to therapy also that's the big yeah. one is I'm also going to therapy that's a and good my one. doctor actually recommended me to go back because I, I haven't gone in a while because uh, I was I was going once a week for a very long time and then I went to once every other week and then I only and then I got to a point where I was doing really well where I would only go when needed mm. but now my doctor is telling me I should go back so I actually I, have to, I forgot to email today but anyway yeah, I've done everything besides medication. Mm. So, uh, I talked to my doctor about it, and uh, I was I was just expecting to uh, talk about medication, and then I was expecting him to say no for some reason, and then yeah. I was just, he was just, he was just going to do my physical, and then I was going to leave, but he said yes, uh, and then I got my physical, but also I got what well, I wasn't expecting. I had to pee in a cup. I got my flu shot, my tetanus shot. And I had to get blood drawn. So I just felt like vi- I violated. Gonna, I was going to say, that's how you described it to me. I felt like really violated hard. by the end of the day. Because uh, <laughs> he wanted to test he wanted to test my vitamin D levels. He wanted to test my thyroid. Yeah, those uh, are my, both my neck to right. see like if I was if anything was wrong. I had a vitamin D deficiency for a while that contributed to yeah, he told, an overall. He, I actually got a call from him today. He told me to get vitamin D pills. But I just got like a... Because he said it wasn't... He said my vitamin D isn't super low. You just need like a supplement or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it was like he told me to get like a thousand units of. Yeah, that's but pretty I got, standard. But I got instead I got this like men's uh, like gummy vitamins. Manly man men's like men's gummy D vitamins. D for dick. And it's like it has like a bunch of other like vitamins in there. Vitamin D's in there, but it's only like four hundred units. But I was like, well, I'm um, getting four hundred units and a bunch of other stuff, so maybe that'll help i'm not a doctor that might be a bad idea i don't know Derek. but we'll see i he he suggested i should definitely get some during the winter yeah during the winter there's less because i i get really bad seasonal depression we, so if it gets really bad same. i'll probably get some and we live in the frozen north <laughs> not really i mean it's we're, new england we're in Ma- we're can we say where we're from well i mean i we're, think we already did yeah, we're in massachusetts yeah, we're, we're, we're in massachusetts yeah so there's very little sun two mass holes a couple here. of mass holes here. Ma- Let me tell you, if you're not from Massachusetts, Massachusetts people love it when you say mass hole. <laughs> okay, just go right up to them and say That's it. They'll great. give you a warm embrace. I'm from Vermont. I love it if you call me a face. redneck. Oh, you're a Vermont redneck? We were, I was just in Vermont. I'm from Vermont. We do what we want. Oh, you we are from we don't, are, I, are you from Vermont? I'm actually from Vermont. Oh, my God. I didn't we even don't know pronounce this. our T's. We say it like a D. Oh we say 99. We say I, 99. I... I <laughs> Was just in it's Vermont. The dumbest distinction. My girlfriend came out to visit, and we were just in Vermont. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went for a couple of days, and I totally forgot that, like, yeah, like Vermont is like the hippie place of New England. They don't call like, it Green Mountain State for nothing, man. We went. The first place we went to was the Ben and Jerry's thing. <laughs> <laughs> ben and Jerry's. Sorry, I totally derailed you. Um, my Vermont mm. chatter. Well, that was just like my day yesterday, and I was like so exhausted 
just from school. Um, and getting all your all your bits taken out. <laughs> all my bits take, my bits and pieces taken out. <laughs> it took all your parts and put them I was all only expecting it to be for like a half hour. I think I was there for like yeah. I had to be there. I was there. I was days. there for like a good hour. Dude, whenever I go to the doctors, I'm always there forever. I feel like Dude, there was legitimately one time I went to the doctor's office and they forgot I was there and the <laughs> hospital was closing and I was sitting there like I've been in this this like like, I was in the room where the doctor was supposed to talk to me. I was there for over an hour. Mm. I was there for, like, almost two or three hours. I was like... And I kept poking my head out the window, like, H- hello? And I saw more nurses leaving. I was like... I looked on the website this one particular hospital, and it's like, we close at 9.30. I was like, okay, well, it's, it's 9.15. Or, yeah, it was like 9.15. I was like, mm, I've been here for pretty much my entire evening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck's going on? The doctor came in and goes, hey, bud. I guess he didn't, I, I don't know what happened. He's like, we, we, we thought, we, I thought I already met with you. And I was like, no, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> you didn't see me, but. You didn't office. see me. <laughs> you didn't see shit. Um, I'm weird. hoping that the anxiety medication works. You'll be all cool. I'm getting Prozac. My dad's on Prozac too. So I'm hoping that the genetics match up. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's one thing, um, I, they always ask like, "Did you have a? Do you have a family member who has a mm. similar issue?" Because that what you just said, like they asked me, because because I had a I have a similar issue. I have generalized anxiety and um and uh, among other 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 thingies that I don't let hold me back because I'm a fucking <laughs> champion. <laughs> we all are. We're all champions. Yeah. Um, We're all fighting our own battles, dude. And and you fight that battle and you fucking win because you're mm-hmm. a pro. I, when I went in, I saw this this one psychiatrist who was really nice and really cool, and she was a good little lady. I was very defensive because I was I went in under in there under like you know not great circumstances. It was like a you know oh, whatever. We don't need to go into that. I'm normal. <laughs> I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. <laughs> uh, that was one of the big things she asked me. Is like, okay. Do your brothers suffer from similar issues? And I was like, yeah, I believe they do. Okay, well, what did they take? And then I said, like, well, nothing worked for them. And she was like, okay. Uh, (laughs) What did they try? And I was like, she suggested Lexapro. I went on the Lexapro. And it's the same thing. Like, I'm going to give you 10 milligrams, but I only want you to take half a pill for, like, two or three weeks. I was like, okay, cool. And so I was doing that. And I found out later while I was on it from my mom, like, Oh no, like, you know, your brother's did that and he and he hated it and like did that and he hated it. And like all these people did did all these things and I was like Oh fuck. <laughs> like like apparently like all, like even my dad too, I think, was on it at one point and he was like like everybody in my family hated Lexapro and, and hated everything. And I went in there and, and, and that and, and yeah, I was on it for like, you know, two almost she she said like after about a month, you won't have any, because that was the thing, is like, there will be symptoms, you'll feel sick, you'll get stomach cramps, you, you know, you may have trouble sleeping, uh, you know, you may feel fatigued during the day, dude, I felt that on 0.5, like, not even, a, like, or not 0.5, but on 5 milligrams, I felt like my stomach was like, like, someone had stuck a knife in my stomach every morning, like, my, my, I always had really bad cramping, I couldn't sleep at all, uh, I didn't care about anything, like, my anxiety was gone, but in place of that anxiety was this just, like, completely apathetic, I don't give a fuck about it. Like, I just wouldn't show up to work sometimes. I'd just wake up and be like, whatever, I'm just going to lay here all day. Mm. Uh, like, I legitimately didn't care about anything. And I just felt sick all the time and constantly in pain. And I came in on the checkup and I said all that to her, just like, maybe, maybe we should take you off of this. <laughs> and I was like... Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> and uh, but it was, and it got really awkward because, uh, you know, she, th- this woman was a temporary psychiatrist, and she was, you know, she's like, you know, you need to find a permanent one that you can go to to get this stuff. And when I found that person, she suggested I told her my whole story, and she was like, "It sounds like that didn't work. Let's put you on tw- twenty-five milligrams of Zoloft." And I was like, "That is like the exact opposite of what this other woman said." <laughs> this other woman yeah. was like, "Let's back way off and start over." This woman's like, "No, no, 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 no. Let's not even wean you off the Lexapro. Let's just jump right into Zoloft." as much as we can pump in you that's legally okay. And I was like, that doesn't sound right at all. So I never even got the prescription. I will say this, though. Every, so prior to the meeting with that woman, I'd, I'd, ta- I'd spoken to like three other therapists and then this psychiatrist, the initial psychiatrist who gave me the Lexapro, I talked to her 
about everything and the Lexapro at one point, um, after this discussion with the second psychiatrist who tried to give him the Zoloft, I spoke to this other woman. And in our initial meetings, I had mentioned I, I use uh, marijuana, medical marijuana, to help with my anxiety a lot. And like, like because for, for me, I can't sleep. I can't like get out of bed. I, I use that to help me sleep and then to help me wake up. And I told her about that. And it's like I'm not getting like rip shit high every day. Like I take a little bit, just like a, like the you know the the dosage they recommend you to take. Um, sometimes even like less than that. And I told her that, and she was like, well, how does that work? And I was like, honestly, it, it definitely takes care of that. Like, panic attacks are, like, a thing of the past. I don't have nightmares anymore, because I also, I also have, like, complex PTSD. Um, and it's like, well, I don't have nightmares anymore. I don't have this or that. Like, honestly, the, the pot helps a lot. So she was like, I talked to her, and then I talked to someone. This is part of a very long, complicated story I probably won't ever tell on the podcast, but I, I spoke, there was, a, there was, like, a fourth or fifth other person I spoke to, who's also like a licensed medical professional, and and pr- pr- what I'm trying to get to is this one psychiatrist who tried to give me a shit so, shitload of Zoloft and told me to never use weed again. I, I had spoken to four other professionals who said the exact opposite. They were like, actually, maybe we should replace the Lexapro with CBD and marijuana. And, and then my actual primary care doctor was like, I think that's a good idea too. He's like, if the Zoloft is making you sick, or the Lexapro is making you sick, and you're anxious about the Zoloft, and weed does the opposite of all that, maybe you should just keep using that, and then maybe add in another supplement, or like, um, the big prescription, like, not prescription, but the big thing that they said for me was, like, exercise and, like, talk therapy with someone with, um, the right type of training, there's a, it was like, which, you know, became a struggle in and of itself, because now I need a very specialized therapist to talk to, and they're very hard to come by. Um, I can't just go see any therapist anymore. I need people, I need to have, like, I found one, I just haven't contacted her yet, but, but not to say, I'm not, I'm not trying to say anything, but, but other, just that sometimes the anti-anxiety meds, you mentioned genetics, sometimes your body just does not mesh with that stuff, and mine, like, does not, like, it did yeah. not work. I have, a, I do have a feeling it's going to work for mine, because I, I had mentioned my dad a, yeah, a little I mean, bit ago, and my dad, for a while, uh, he was just very anxious and angry and like very OCD. I mean, the anxiety uh, manifests yeah. in really weird ways. And we got a the big thing was we got a dog. It was the first time we ever had a dog, and he was he loved the dog, but at the same time he would get so angry yeah. at the dog. It was always fighting with my mom, and it, and like I got to a point where like he went to the doctor and the, he didn't even really like mention anything about that to the doctor. The doctor just kind of noticed like. You good? You feeling yeah, okay? Like yeah. and he's like, and then gave him this prescription, and he is like a completely different person now. He's so much happier. Yeah, handles dude. stress way better. And, and he doesn't like yell really anymore. Loves the dog. Like so, and you know, my mom also has anxiety. Like I have my whole family, dude. Everybody's got anxiety. My whole family <laughs> has like level. yeah, but my yeah, my whole family has like that level of like bad anxiety my mom has it like my generalized has anxiety it. yeah just, my yeah. my both grandmothers have it so like Excuse my me. yeah i'm just riddled with it like <laughs> generations of riddled it. so i feel like it's going to work cuz i feel like if it's working for my dad and it's working for my mom or it did work for my mom then it you it'll you're probably, probably good yeah it probably yeah. work for me cuz i've tried cuz you know i've tried all of you tried all the homeopathic non doctory methods yeah I, I'm not trying to sit here and poo-poo anti-anxiety mm-hmm. drugs. Uh, I personally no, like. I just, you, you're just the. You're in the minority where you do the, you do the weeds. And yeah, you feel good. Like, my my genetic makeup is different. Yeah. I I like yeah. I definitely come from a family of like closet anxiety freaks. Like I I think my family also has like a huge history of like alcoholism, um, and I think that that's why. I think that like aunts, uncles, grandmothers, grandfathers, they all drank so much because they had severe fucking anxiety. And yeah. That, you know, like, you know, I had, I had a grandfather, I mean, he's dead now, but I had a grandfather who made it through the Great Depression. You know, they don't know what the fuck anti-anxiety is at that point. They're just like, oh, you're worried. Take a shot of whiskey. Shut yeah. up. <laughs> you know, like... Um, yeah, exactly. Take <laughs> yeah. a shot of whiskey. Shut up. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, like, uh, that's that was like the society they came out of. I mean, even for my... I mean, my mom, she's 60 now. She's seen a lot that the world has to offer, and she's, you know done what you can to change with the time. She's definitely pretty with it. But yeah, like the genetics thing is is a, it just, is a huge factor. Like like I said, like my father had this similar issue. My father and I actually have really similar mental 
whatever you want to call I don't want to call them issues because they're because I don't see that like I don't see anxiety or depression as like you have a problem it's like no no yeah like I read a I had a I read a book that I, I recommend anybody who has anxiety to read this book it's called um uh, first we make the beast beautiful okay. and that's what the whole book is oh, about you told me about this yes okay. yeah so the whole book is about is that's what the whole kind of what the message of the book is is like seeing your anxiety not as a problem but just as it's just a part of you it's just Yes. What you are, learning to accept it, yes. learning the ins and outs of it, like, where did it come from, mm. sort of the... I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there about, like, um, like it being a prehistoric thing. Like, people, like, animals who had, like, you know, like, your homo sapien, whatever the fuck, ancestors, who it's had... It was a survival uh, tactic. Yeah, it was just survival. Why, would you, like, why the, would you get up in the morning? The people who had anxiety were the ones that stayed up and, like... Watch did, did for like tigers and stuff, yeah. and like, and then we're able to go and warn the tribe. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's all about the whole. That's what the whole book is. It's just about seeing it in a different light. And there's all kinds of uh, self help stuff in there. It's the author is an amazing author. Like Sarah Wilson is amazing, and she's gone through a lot about with anxiety mm-hmm. and depression, and she has all these like tips and tricks and meditation stuff and breathing techniques, and uh, she talks about medication. Um, in her own experience with medication, yeah, I would recommend that book highly to anybody who has anxiety. Sorry to go off on that, but you just no, mentioned dude, like, seeing it as an issue. Well, so like, well, that on on exactly off of that, dude. I'm like a living example of that. You know, like I said, when I was on the Lexapro, I mentioned earlier, like the anxiety was gone. So it was also the will to do literally anything else. I, I talked to this one woman. You know, I, I went through a bunch of testing and stuff, and the one giving me the testing, she explained to me like. Be, because the way the way it was described to me initially by the one psychiatrist who gave me Lexapro, she was like, essentially, what the Lexapro is supposed to do, she's like, we're not going to try to rewire your brain. You know, we're not drugging you up and turning you into a zombie. What we're doing is, uh, you know, supposedly, you know, generally, in people's lives, they're not anxious all the time. Something happens where they become anxious, and then their brain just, like, sticks in that anxious mode. And you, you can, like, give yourself generalized anxiety by, like... You know, let's say I was working on like a, you know, like a show, like I was working on like some some show where I had to get like a bunch of stuff done and, and like, you know, for two or three months I was just constantly stressed. Living like that, your brain can get so used to being that way that you remain in that anxious state constantly and then you take these, you know, like Lexapro or whatever to kind of like bring your brain back to where it was before it was anxious and you just kind of keep it that way for a long enough time that your brain is like, oh no, this is the normal state now. And then you slowly wean off of the drug so that um, you know, your body doesn't need it anymore and your brain is just used to not being anxious. Because like you just said, anxiety is like a survival tactic. Like, you know, you get anxious in certain situations because it, it causes you to react quickly. And it makes, like, you know, for example, like if you're getting mugged, you get anxious because it's like, okay, I could, I could get hurt right now. I mm-hmm. need to react quickly. The way... That this other, you know, I went through, it was four days of testing, and each test was like two to three hours long. And at the end of it all, the woman I, I did it with was basically like, yeah, you've been anxi- anxious, like, essentially since you were born. That's, that's, your anxiety is what fuels pretty much everything you do. <laughs> she, she was yeah. like, if you're not anxious, you know, she's like, you meet your deadlines because you get anxious about them. You do X, Y, and Z because you get anxious. Like, you don't know how to exist with that anxiety. The problem is, when does that anxiety go from being a tool and start becoming, you know, an exigency that you have to get over, like some, some obstacle you have to overcome. And so it's like finding the balance between, yeah. like, for me, it's, it's the talk therapy with the right person and a, and a little bit of pot to like take the edge off and just like, you know. Recently for me, it's been like a, it's been a real obstacle. Mm-hmm. Like it's been a real. Yeah, perfect. you get caught in like thinking ruts. Yeah, it's yeah. been, it's been a real, yeah. Pretty like I don't know when it started. No, kind of after. I think it was after the like after the set that we did. Oh Cause, really? Because I was doing no. real, I was doing really well for a while. I I had a breaking point, really low point when I started the semester, uh, like my first semester at Emerson, and then I got better as the months went on because I started doing therapy and I started yeah. reading the books and I started like researching more and like mm-hmm. actually trying to get a gr- and like. Watching a lot of, uh, I was that's, watching a lot of Jordan Peterson. That's really good uh, too. It's, yeah, which is, I got myself out of that rut. I'm like you said, I'm a living example too. Where like, we were I got myself out of that rut, and it was after the set that we did. I don't know what it was, but I, I just kind of went back down again. I couldn't sleep. I was getting really anxious. Mm-hmm. School started back up, so then I, 
I just hate I just hate everything about school right now. Like mm. I and I get it's it's really like a it's becoming a block in my life and it's making me like which is the real reason which is really the the catalyst that made me want to actually like go and do the medicine because I've tried it I tried everything and it at that and it had worked and I was doing really well and then I spiraled back down mm-hmm. kind of there are points where I just get really depressed or I'm like losing interest in doing in, th- in like doing things yeah. like I'm losing int- I'm I'm getting really apathetic. I I just want to like Do you find yourself just like staring at the wall? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 staring yeah, at the wall. That. I stare off into space for a very long time and like I don't and this I'm just like I don't want to do anything. I just want to like sit and play video games or like watch a movie or like not <laughs> do not do anything. S- same. Like, yeah. It's 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 aw- and, like so that's that it got to a point where it was really where I was like, okay, I can't do the CBD anymore. I can't do the it's meditation. Not like yeah. it's not enough anymore. Like I need to get to a point where it's normal again. You need to get back to baseline, essentially. Yeah. So that's when I was like, I need to try the medication because it's the only thing I haven't tried. And I was doing, and I don't know if it's because we're getting into the fall and I get really bad seasonal depression, but like, but even during the summer, it's just like this constant anxiety. Like my, the big thing that I hate that I do with my anxiety is that I, I get into like a paralysis by analysis. Do you do that? Or like analysis yeah, by paralysis, exactly. whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, you just get into these like weird looping logic. Yeah, I get, I get into like a, yeah, anxiety loop and I just, I just don't do anything and like I just get yeah. stuck like. Dude, I remember there was, there was one point a while ago where I was like, I had an email written up to send to my boss about something and I was like, I was just like looking at the mouse for maybe like an hour. <laughs> just like, do I want to hit send or not? <laughs> Like, am I, am I, yeah. and there's like all the things I, I want to mention this uh, the fact that you go got went and sought help initially and are doing it like you can fall back on that knowing that like no matter how bad it gets you will have enough you you innately have enough awareness to educate yourself and, and have the agency to, to do something about it don't ever like let go of that fact you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like some some people, like I've done that before too. Like you know, I almost I take myself for granted, or like I, I underestimate myself and be like, no, I, yeah. I can't do it. But it's like, no, if you can go out and get the help, and you you become aware of this, that's actually really good because that means deep down inside, you know, you you can analyze what's going on with you, and and you have the will and agency to actually change it for the better, um, or whatever. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I've been definitely trying to do that more, which is, like, acknowledging, yeah, acknowledging myself more, like, yes. trying to... giving yourself a break, Yeah, too. giving myself a break, giving myself more credit, being like, okay, no, like, it's, it's not yeah. this, like, you, you did this, like, you, you know, you're getting through it, and, like, you're you know, realizing... And you've you know, done it before, yeah, like, like, that's like, another big one, is, like, you pulled yourself out once, you can do it again. Yeah. You know. As long as, as long as you're willing to put in the effort. And yeah. as long as you want to make a change, because I've always, that's the thing is I, I obviously I never wanted to feel like this and it sucks. And like, yeah. if anybody on listening to this is going through anxiety, we know how you feel. We know. And it's, it's, a, it's important that you take care of yourself and it's, you, you're always the first step. Yeah. You got to take the first the, step. Th- that's the hardest one too, is like making that phone call or sending that email. It's like, you mm-hmm. know, what, and then the other thing too is like, you know, it's, it can be a little intimidating, especially considering from, you know, all that we've just said, like a lot goes into it, like, but it's really enriching. I think like, you know, you learn a lot about yourself Oh yeah. and your place in the world. And it makes it, it for me, it definitely made it easier to like, you know, become more empathetic towards people. Cause it's like, okay. I get angry about X, Y, and Z, and I know why. They don't know why, and I don't know why they're angry about this. Mm-hmm. So you know, everybody's got like their own thing going on. So you just kind of become really aware of like if you, once you become super aware of yourself, you're you are able to analyze everyone else, and it just makes it easier to like fit into situations because you're like, oh, okay, you know, not everybody can tell what's going on in my head. Only mm-hmm. I can, and vice versa. So it's like I've also been getting like I know I noticed I've been getting really angry. Too. Dude, same. Like, I, I like fly off the handle at nothing sometimes. Yeah, like I, <laughs> I realized. Yeah, stupid. like the my. When I get anxiety, angry at myself. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've like, been Ugh. like there was one day where I was so like it was so weird because like, I was thinking to myself like why am I so angry I don't I, I'm I'm not this it's kind just, of person it's, I'm just, it's just the like and it was just the anxiety was just building up it it, so mani- much. it, like, it manifests in certain ways I mean the build up I mean that that's why exercise I think is a really good thing one thing I remember I, I had a I was stage managing once and it was just like the most stressful shitty 
time ever. And, and the tech week alone was like a living hell. And I was sick the entire time. And my therapist at the time suggested, she was like, why don't you just like, you've got the gym near you, right? And I had a free gym membership at the time. I was like, yeah. She's like, why don't you just get on one of those those bikes and just like, just ride it for like an hour. Just just like, like as hard or as slow as you want. Just like, just ride that for an hour. Don't think about anything. Don't even put, you know, you could put music on if you want, but like, just don't do anything. Just just ride the bike for an hour. And honestly, after an hour of riding the bike, like I felt way less stressed. Like for me, physical stuff, like physically getting the energy out of my body, whether it's like running or like something, exercise, or like even, you know, working on stuff late into the night, like something, you know, I find myself snapping less often because like, and I'm, and then in general, like I'm a really physical, like and visual person, like things need to be very tangible for me. So, mm-hmm. but I also find like if, if I don't find that outlet, whether it's therapy or exercise, that it, it builds up and it manifests into like, you know, sometimes I start projecting weird things, you know, like someone will say something and I'll hear an entirely different meaning out of it. And it's like, no, that's just my you know, anxiety, like telling me that that's what that is. Which is, it's kind of funny because it's almost scary, like, can I trust my brain? But then at the same time, well, you can trust your, trust your brain because you're aware that this is happening. So yeah. it's like, you know, um, you're not crazy. You're just yeah. hyper aware. I probably should <laughs> work out more, but... I, I mean, know. you know, anything. Like, even just, like, going for a walk. Like, yeah. just, just any physical thing can help wow. a lot. I, I sound feel, body, I, sound mind. Sound body, sound mind. <laughs> I feel like we should mention some of, the, like, the good things... Like, that's the thing, is, like, we were saying anxiety can be a tool and that you should accept it for what it is. Dude. We've been talking about all the bad stuff, but, like, there's good things. Like, I mean, if I didn't have my anxiety ADHD brain, I probably wouldn't have had all the ideas that I've had because I'm constantly in my brain. Exactly. Thinking about The problem for me is organizing and and executing. That's the biggest. That's me, too. I I just... It takes me a bit... difficult part. It takes me a bit to get to that point where Mm -hmm. I actually sit down to write and it ta- and it stresses me out to sit down and write because then I'm thinking like well I probably should be doing homework I should be doing this. oh like, dude doing that. dude you dude know. the moment I do anything I'm like what are all the other things I should be doing right now no matter what it is yeah it's <laughs> everything it's, I do it's a it's a challenge and I I think that's why I'm ready to do medicine just because get, I'm ready to like there. I'm ready to like have it work with me a little bit yeah, I mean, Pills. to to to, I think we should put a pin in this because this could be the whole podcast. Yeah, <laughs> we but, could. Uh, well, we'll we'll change topics, but yeah. but the point is, I think the big thing to take away is that. Uh, well, I wanna I wanted to just add one last like descriptor. The woman I I met I mentioned earlier who gave me all the testing, and we mentioned it as a tool. That's how she kind of just she's like, you you've got you know if you picture your 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 brain as like or the way i remember her saying it was like if you picture your brain as essentially like a hot air balloon right the anxiety depression whatever it is is kind of like the ropes on top of the balloon keeping it from going all the way up you you're not cutting the ropes you're just untying them and like tucking them into the basket of the balloon if that makes sense so you can like tether yourself back to the ground if you need to like the you know the whole idea of being like we just need to kind of we don't need to get rid of these things. We just need to move them out of the way so the balloon can actually take off. Like, it's that type of, like, it's not necessarily a hindrance, and it shouldn't be a hindrance, but it can be a hindrance. Yeah. I think the big take, the big yeah, takeaway no, that I no. kind of noticed was, uh, is that you should try, you should try everything when you, if you have anxiety. You should try all these different methods. Don't be afraid to try different methods. I mean, don't you're going to have to try stuff. Yeah, don't yeah. be afraid to... Try the medication. Because everyone's don't different. Be, yeah, don't be afraid to try marijuana or CBD. Don't be afraid to do exercise or try meditation. Mm-hmm. Act, don't be afraid fact, to read more about it. Like Honestly, try those things first. You know, try the exercise and the yeah, meditation I, I, first. Yeah, I would suggest that too. Like, try try the more, uh, quote-unquote, like, natural yeah. stuff. Because sometimes have, that's all it is. Yeah. Do exercise. Yeah. Do try meditation. Read some books about anxiety. Do CBD oil. The, if it's legal where the, you are. Some places it's not. But like the other thing too is we're both like I'm 23 and you are also I'm, 23. No, 24. 21. 21. Yeah. What? You're so little. <laughs> um, not really. You're like a, like a year younger. Than, um, 
two. Or two, yeah, it's but two. like, well, <laughs> so, I know it's two, but like sometimes I don't. When, didn't you recently have a birthday? Whatever. I, I sometimes it's closer. Yeah, I was gonna say sometimes it's closer than it. Whatever. Birthdays are weird, dude. And I'm also bad at math, but <laughs> yeah, we, we are at an age specifically like between like 17 and like 25 you go through so many changes hormonally and whatnot like you know you could be be becoming anxious for any reason like even me uh, myself now like my body has changed just a lot in general like not even like drastically just like little things like you you change so much over time that like you know, you may have not had anxiety your entire life and then there's like a chemical shift in you where it's like, okay, you should probably get out and walk more or yeah. whatever. Like sometimes it's a really, and, and, you know, like we said earlier, everybody's body is different. Anxiety manifests itself in different ways in everyone. Uh, and you may not even notice you had, like I, I had no idea I really had anxiety until, until a therapist told me you have anxiety. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about butts. Be cool. Who's Dad got out. the biggest butt? <laughs> Man, we're talking about butts, talking about beans, we're talking about no, all um, things. What I did want to talk about. <laughs> now, what do you want to talk butts. about? Um, Larry Butts. No, let's change gears. Let's go on a little something. We'll switch gears. Let's go on a little something. Friendly. We had an anxious talk for um, for pretty much the entire we podcast. We talked about uh, movies and TV shows last Ooh. podcast. Why don't we talk about music? What do you? I wanted to know. What do you like listening to? What do I like listening? Yeah, like to? what do you like? Man, what do you listen? What, you. Well, like, what do you listen to now? Like, what what's some stuff you're listening to now? So music is like, music is like, uh, it's really subjective, um, and, and yeah, wacky. Good one. But uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking picking on me? <laughs> music is really Wait, subjective. Fucking okay, music subjective. Yeah, every all art. Dude, is subjective. I know. No, but what I'm trying to say is. People are re- like of all the things we snobby about. Music is one of the main ones. Like I think like, you're snobby about. No, not me. Are you I, mean, I mean, people in general. Yeah, like, oh. like like those folks when you say like I've never seen a Lord of the Rings and people are like never seen a Lord of the Rings. What the fuck's wrong with you? It's like yeah. I don't fucking know. Leave me alone. Well, it's just because I think I mean movies are very accessible to people, but I, th- I feel like music is the most accessible. I don't form. even know the genre. I, I don't even know what I would call it. Listen to now. What, uh, so I'm a huge like I'm I'm a big David Bowie fan. I love David Bowie. David like, Bowie's a man. David Bowie. Um, wait, but that's actually a cover he did. But um, <laughs> I love David Bowie, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, all all that like all that because like my dad, I grew up listening to my dad's music and he listened to a lot of, like Allman Brothers, Led Zeppelin, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, um, Santana. Uh, so he got into Grateful Dead later for some reason. I just <laughs> randomly got into Grateful Dead one day, and I was like, "All right, Dad, fucking." W-. When this was like when I was out of high school, I was like, "Suddenly you're a deadhead." Um, so I listened to a lot of that stuff, but recently I've been listening to a lot of like, um, I guess synthwave, vaporwave. I don't, I don't know what to call it. It's because it's not even that. I, I listen to a lot of like either re-recorded video game soundtracks or like okay. like 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 um. Barrel Barrel Bash or whatever from from the original like Donkey Kong like okay. Super, on the Super Nintendo, you know like dun, dun, dun. Uh, I don't know it's so fucking nice, uh, <laughs> dude. Honestly, like Final Fantasy music, <laughs> like Final yeah. Fantasy nine and seven is some of my favorite music ever. Uh, I have this playlist called Warrior's Fury that I listen to and I run. <laughs> you are telling me about, dude. It's it's you're like about this I feel like an eighties action hero. It's like dun 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 <laughs> there's, there's one where it's like who is this akira and then it's like the japanese or whatever like type like dub of, of akira comes in it's like and then it's like whoa it's like and i'm like whoa and I'm like it's just like just lots of different like synth and like like you know like electric music kind of like something about it because like they're like really one of my favorite i fucking what is the name of it it's called like High Rollin' or something. I, I say it's one of my favorite. That's the thing too is like because these songs have no lyrics, I can't ever. Re- I can only remember the sound. I never remember the yeah. name. It's called like High Rollin', and it's like do 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 do. But it starts layering up on top of itself, and getting like more and more intense. And like, dude, I just picture a bunch of robots on roller skates like powering down the street. <laughs> like, it's such a fucking cool like dun 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 dun, dun and it gets like really dramatic. And there's like eight di- like not even eight there's like 10 million different like synth things going on they're all in tandem i don't know but that's that's what i've listened to right now like essentially i, I like to think of it as like 
what robots would listen to or like space music yeah like because like, some of it is less intense it's really like cool calm like i have one thing called star cruiser and it's like really smooth like dude you know laser hawk at all no um dude laser hawk's dream rider album uh or laser hawk redline skull and shark dream rider is way more calm and cool dream rider by laser hawk is really fucking good Neon Dr- I don't know, but that it's like really smooth, like sort of spacey, electric, vapory. But that's what I've been listening to recently, yeah. other than like you know Fleetwood Mac and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But that's my music, bro. Mm. I listen, dude. Honestly, like I, I listen to a lot of shit. I, I don't think there's really like there is definitely bad music, but I feel like every every like brand and style of music has its own like merit. Um, yeah. Honestly, like, I, sure. if I could go back, I'd be a musician. I could still be a musician if I wanted I to. I wanted like. to be a musician for a long time. Yeah. I, was, I wanted to be, like, a an Ed Sheeran type for, oh, for okay. a while. Okay. But I don't like it. I don't really like Ed Sheeran anymore. <laughs> I think he's whatever. I just want to um, be behind, like, a board making noises. It's like, making noises. I want to be, like, I've, I've always <laughs> wanted to write music. I've just never found... I've just never really found the genre that I want to do. Recently, going into the music, I, I recently I've been listening to a lot of like blues, but like, yeah. like, like Delta, Dude, just make whatever, like Delta country blues. Like, you know, David Bowie like was going to be like a blues, bluegrass type of guy at first. Uh, if that's really, yeah. Like, but I'm weird. listening to like, cause I'm, I'm taking a jazz class right now and like the class kind of really got like me to the blues. So like I'm listening to like Charlie Brat, Charlie Patton, Robert Johnson, Blind Lemon Jefferson, Old school, the, the old names. school, pulling all blue the delta names. like uh, the delta blues, country blues like musicians. The real blues, um, <laughs> original whatever. The other, uh, blues. but like that really, I was like super into the music, and I was like, man, I would love to write a song like that. And I was like, mm-hmm. well, I don't really know the blues. I was like, well, fuck, I'm just still keep, learning the blues. Yeah, yeah. I was so say, like, yeah, so I'm, I've it. been watching. A bu- I've been saving a bunch of tutorials on YouTube, and like, I finally brought my guitar out. I haven't like touched the guitar in like a year, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna try to learn like the blues. I'm gonna try to learn some like blues. I really like the Studio I, Ghibli soundtracks too, or Ghibli, mm-hmm. whatever. Well, yeah, I'm sort of in the same boat as you, where it's like I love listening to video game soundtracks, movie scores. Like, I love. Like moving Lord, music, yeah, Lord of the Rings sc- yes, score, dude, like yes, all kinds of like movie scores. Yeah, because it just I get to like relive the movie without having to like watch. You get the all movie. the f- well, because like, dude. On that note, fucking Star Wars is the greatest space opera of all time. If you take the music out of Star Wars, it's like the worst movie ever. It's so fucking yeah. boring. Like it's awful. Yeah, that that score makes that fucking movie. Yeah. So the original tri- trilogy. I don't talk about any of the other bullshit. <laughs> Honestly, okay, Star Wars died. Do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about Star no. Wars? No, <laughs> no, dude. Because I'm like the biggest Star Wars nerd, and I fucking hate Star Wars. <laughs> I see. I okay. As a kid, I was a fan of Star Wars. I obviously yeah, liked the original trilogy. I still love. And it. as a kid, the prequels came out, and I liked the prequels. I didn't even like them as a kid. <laughs> as a kid, I liked them because I was, you know, I didn't fucking know any better. I was like, whatever. It's. St- because, like, I didn't see them... I didn't like them as much as... I didn't see them until later. I didn't like the original That's trilogy true. as much as... Every, well, like, when I was a kid, all I would do... All I would do when I would watch movies is I would, like, reenact them by myself. So, like, oh, I wouldn't rec- I wouldn't record myself. I would just, like... You know, I'd have a no, lightsaber and I'd pretend to be... Yeah, I would dude. have the scene play on the TV. Like... Oh, I have, see. I would have, like... I would be watching, like, Return of the Jedi and there would be the scene where he, like, fights people on the ships. Like, he escapes... Like, Luke Skywalker escapes and everything. Right. So and I would just pretend to be Luke Skywalker as that scene's playing on, and then as soon as the scene was done, I rewind Dude, it back and I would play it again. Yeah, you know, so like as a as a kid, and I would do that with every movie, like Lord of the Rings, fucking the Ghost Rider movie, the Nick Cage yes, Ghost Rider movie. I do that with like every movie that I really liked. And then it wasn't until I got older to when I actually got into films and kind of rewatched them again, where I was like, okay, these Here's aren't going good. On. Well, obviously, Lord of the Rings was great. The original. You don't Star- like the original Ridge. For what, Star Wars? Yeah. No, I like the original trilogy, yeah, yeah. but I realized I, I don't like it as much as everybody else does. Mm-hmm. Like, like you, my girlfriend, my best friend, Jose, okay. like, Haley and my best friend, Jose, and you, like, you all love Star Wars. Like, you mm-hmm. love it, you live it, you breathe mm-hmm. it, they have so much Star Wars stuff. I... Big Star Wars. I, I like Star Wars, and I appreciate it, but I don't love it on that um. level. As, like, like I, people do. Okay. 
I, I, I think it's a cool I movie. have a lot of explaining to do. Because my love of Star Wars is a very complex, weird thing. Because... I want to say this though. Well, you're like a you're like a fan, and I understand that. Where you're like, no, you dude, love it, but you hate I, it because that's like most I, Star no, Wars this, fans. This is what I'm saying. I like Star Wars died to me years ago, and I encapsulated it in, in my own Star Wars universe. <laughs> like yeah. I I have my own head canon based off of things that were thrown out of the canon when Disney bought it, and like all 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 this stuff. I I watched the original trilogies with my father a lot. Like he and I would sit down and watch them together, and it was like a thing we did. So that was part of why I liked them. I didn't know shit about the prequels until like third or fourth grade, uh, and even then I was like, you know, my friends are talking about, like, man, it's so cool, and like I was wary to get into it because I'm like, my dad probably won't like it, and like I don't know, I just like these movies. Like I was like, you know, I don't really like even as a kid, I was like. I, you know, cool, start, like, Darth Vader gets a backstory. Whatever. I don't want to see fucking Darth Vader before he's Darth Vader. Who gives a fuck about Darth Vader? Before? Darth Vader is cool because he's Darth Vader. I don't want to see him running around his little leather vest. Uh, robot hand. Fuck that. Darth Vader is cool because he's fucking Darth Vader. Yeah. I don't give a shit about all that. I, like, in, as a kid, I didn't think about, like, who was he before? I was like, he's scary and awesome. I love him. <laughs> Like everybody, like everyone else did when they watched these movies. Yes, yes. Nobody was thinking... Nobody was really thinking, I need to see the backstory of Darth Vader. It's like, no. We, no, we same get... with fucking Boba Fett. He doesn't say anything. He's like, he looks fucking cool. And yeah. then people wrote books about Boba Fett yeah. just because he looked cool. And those books got thrown out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, and that was actually the surprising thing. Like, when I, re- when I rewatched the trilogy, the original trilogy, like a while ago. He doesn't fucking say yeah, anything. Yeah, exactly. I was like, he oh my God. Like one like, or two things. Like, you know, you, you see Boba Fett everywhere and he's so fucking cool. And then you watch it as an adult and you're like, He's a, he says, side, he's a side character. He doesn't say any fucking thing. He's, he's in, not even he's a side character. He's in the second movie. He's in the second movie for like ten minutes. He's in the third one for like three. Dude. He gets and then that's it. And it's like And look at the Mandalorian mercenaries. They wrote backstories for they the created, fucking bounty hunters. That exactly. Were, and like and it's like I didn't They need, created a whole race based off of Boba Fett. Yeah. An entire planet called Mandalore. <laughs> yeah. Because he's technically a Mandalorian. Or he yeah. wears Mandalorian armor. Like which is a whole other thing. Like, I don't yeah, know. I, exactly. That, that's the thing. It's like, I guess just George Lucas. George Lucas is a fucking nutball. I mean, <laughs> let, let's be real. real. That's the thing. Is it just, he just, I don't think he really understood. George Lucas he, wants to make what, what George Lucas created. wants to make. I just don't think he understood what he created. No. I like, don't think he it cares. Was, it was perfect the way it was. Those three movies. Well, you know he doesn't like what Disney's doing. Like, I've, yeah, I've heard, I, I've heard I he's that, like, fuck this. Uh, there's a video... By Jeremy Johns, who is if you've never heard of Jeremy Johns, he's an awesome reviewer. But he's talking about uh, who's Bob, Iger, Bob uh, Iger, the guy who runs Disney, essentially. Right, 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 right. CEO right. of Disney. He talked about. He basically just said in his book, like, "Oh, George Lucas did he's, not approve of what we were doing no, he's, at, at, at Disney, and we made all he these." He had his own Basically ideas. saying, like, we wrote these contracts saying that we'll do what you want to do, but then we didn't do it. Kind of like so. Jeremy Johns goes into length about his opinions about it. And he's like, I, he's he's never to disclaimer, he's never read the book, but just kind of going off of that quote and all the other information. So um, yeah, I I feel I do feel bad for Star Wars fans because it's just like no, dude, don't because it's like everything is kind of well, actually, don't, I guess not because you can just totally you can just ignore all that stuff and just go back that, to the that's what go I'm back saying. to the original trilogy. The, you can, you can just cut all that stuff out. There's so much out there, Star Wars wise. I wouldn't feel bad for Star Wars fans. You can just go out. I would feel yeah. bad for the new ones that didn't get to actually taste the magic of Star Wars because it's fucking ruined. Like, yeah, th- I feel like the same shit is gonna happen with Marvel, and it already is. It's just like it gets be- becomes this overblown, like rotting corpse of like how uh, much how much flesh can we pull off? Of honestly, this? <laughs> like, I I love the MCU, but I. I really do wish that they just waited a couple more years to like, because it's like we just finished the Infinity Saga, and I was like, I felt so complete, I felt so satisfied. Nothing can have a fucking ending anymore. Yeah. Do I really want more? Like, I feel good. Like, I almost really do wish that. It, like, I really kind of wish that like Endgame was the last yeah. one. It's fucking called Endgame. Yeah. Fuck's sake, make a new thing. I mean, I would have been. I mean, like, I know, 
I would have loved to have seen more Spider-Man. We're still going to get more Spider-Man yeah, yeah. now with all the MCU. Just but, go, but that's said. the thing is like just go into another Spider-Man universe. Like there's there's a million different Spider-Man. Well, we're already going to do They've already might be, done probably going like to be that. leaving the MCU. They've already now. done. Yeah, like he's going to well, he's going to be he has one more movie and then he has another I think. I don't really understand what the deal is. They said <laughs> they say he's back in the MCU, uh-huh. but he only has like a, one movie and then like like a solo movie and then like another Marvel it's movie, like complicated. And then he's yeah. out, like so he's not technically back in the MCU. He's just fiddling around. Well, I don't know. I don't dude, really understand Star Wars. But that's like I'm kind of like, but that's like really quick. I'm just going another <laughs> aside. Like it's kind of making me miss like the older superhero movies. Like I'm, I'm like yeah, where it's like one. It's, and it's done, making like... me miss like the the rainy movies, and I, I like. Oh, right. For the longest time, I was like, no, I fuck the Rain movies. I love Tom Holland. Uh-huh. And, like, I, don't think I still love Tom Holland, Spider Man. But I kind of feel myself, I kind of feel like people are going to fucking hate me for saying this. I feel like, I'm, like especially nah, my friends. Dude, don't worry about it. Because we, we talk about this all the <laughs> time. Fuck them. I feel like I'm, wa- I feel like I'm kind of waning back to the Raimi trilogy yeah. because it was just so, I don't know, it was so focused on Spider Man. Yeah. And it, it, the same with, like, with like because the, Spider-Man's fucking cool. Same with like the Nolan trilogies. Like same with like the Nolan. Yeah. Trilogy. It was just so focused on Batman. Yeah. It was so focused on the character of Batman. And specifically, some of the things from like some some of the, like the best Batman comics. Like, yeah. So, and um, Spider-Man, like we got really great stuff. Like Sam Raimi did a really great job. And I love again. I love Tom Holland. I love Homecoming a I, lot. Yeah, I, I thought Home, he was a great Spider-Man. There's so many like people quote lines from the Raimi films. I quote Ryan. I quote lines from Rhymes. from home rhymes. I quote lines from Homecoming because I love them so much. And I and I liked I liked Far From Home. I think I like Homecoming a bit more. Mm-hmm. I uh, didn't see Far From Home. F- Far From Home was really good, but I think I gotta watch. And then they movies. they released a re-release because they there was a bunch of footage that they took out, and it oh, really would have helped the film because it was the stuff that they cut out. Like it was sh- like Peter having to sell his. Uh, his Legos, so oh, that he could actually go on the school trip, because so that would have shown like his money troubles that he, he's never had yet. I think there was a deleted scene of like MJ actually having home life, like this new Michelle having home trouble, mm. and that's what the original MJ had. She had like her dad was kind of abusive. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. it was going to show that. I saw a scene where they were like kind of fell asleep on the plane together, like oh, like on the way back. Hey. Um, there was a lot of good stuff. That was cut, that and sucks. And, uh, and it was. I understand why the, the director John Watts said it just just didn't work with the flow of the movie. Right. Like I don't think people would have cared because I think people wanted to see people want to see that stuff. And like we still haven't gotten an Uncle Ben mentioned yet, which whatever. I don't care at this point. But <laughs> honestly, like I'm more excited for Spider Man PS4. I'm more excited for uh, that universe than the films right now. I, see. I could care less about. If he's back in the MCU or not anymore, yeah, I don't really care. You're, yeah, same I want Spider Man. P- I just want Spider Man PS4 now. I it's, want Spider Man PS4 2 or whatever the fuck they're gonna call it's it. It's the same with me in Star Wars now. Like those characters, I saw their stories. They're over. To see you know old Luke trying to teach this weird little girl, I'm like, this is meaningless to me now. It's it's just it's just more spaceship. It's just, the only reason I I like and I haven't really gone out of my way to watch any of them. Uh, like they come on Netflix and I throw them on when I work on stuff just because I like the sound of laser fire in the background yeah. and like looking up and seeing spaceships like ooh story like the fucking solo movie was like I get, fuck off with that shit like it was fun to watch like like I, I thought s- okay I thought solo was actually good eh, I mean it wasn't bad but but, but at the same time Dude, it should have just been a fucking movie it about felt a like the most, It shouldn't have been Han Solo. It, it felt like just, the most non-Star Wars yeah, story, and I loved it. It could have just... could have been its own space western. It? That, yeah. It could have been its own original space western that's, movie. It didn't that's have to how be I a felt. Solo. Even with... And I actually liked... A lot of people don't like Rogue One, and I understand... I fucking loved Rogue One. Yeah, I, lo- I love Rogue One. I, I, I thought totally, that was badass. I totally understand why people don't like it, because they... It's just like a big reference fest. I understand. Yeah. But it felt like, again, it felt like the most original Star Wars film. But even if you saw it out of context, outside of context, it just looks like a crazy sci fi romp, which is what it felt like to me. And I was like, oh shit, that's right. They were doing all this. Yeah. I, yeah, I liked it. It felt, didn't feel like a Star Wars movie. Like, or it was kind of, which was kind of cool. It took a break from, it, it took a break from, 
all yeah. of the main canon stuff. Like, and it kind of went back a little bit. But I like it. Here's my thing about Star Wars. There, there is a lot out there, but it's harder to get now because, you know, licensing shit. Like, all the comics and stuff and all the little stories about it. As far as I know, they're, like, not in print anymore. Nobody's making new ones because Disney owns everything. So you're not going to get these weird... Ex- like, the expanded universe is what I loved about Star Wars. Like, yeah. Like, you know, all the video, like, Knights of the Republic 1 and 2, like, those were all... Oh, the, uh, there's that Boba Fett, Jango Fett game from the prequels. Ooh. Well, fuck that. The prequels are lame. <laughs> no, but it was really good, though. Like, no, it was like, a, you oh, played yeah? as, like, you just, you played as, like, Jango Fett, like, from, or he whatever, ran around. or, like, whatever Boba Fett's dad is. Dude, You play dude. as him, and, like, you're just, you just, you're, it's fucking awesome. Dude, I'm, I'm talking... Shoot guys, no, no, it's fucking no, no. sick. No. I'm talking Knights of the Republic. I'm talking old you're, school you're RPG. Dude, old school role-playing game. Like, you get to just... You're, it's like thousands of years before any of that. You're just in the Star Wars universe doing yeah. stuff. But it's oh, like... What you, how do you feel about the new Star Wars game that's coming out? What the fuck? I f- what is it? Uh, Have I not heard I of this? I think it's a... I think... Uh, is it the open world one? Because they were going to make a really cool open world yeah, one. Yeah, it's like an open it. world one. It takes place, I think, in between the pre... It's like after the prequels. Here's... And like... In, like it's like before the main story, you know? Here's... Like here's, uh, the, the Skywalker... The original Skywalker trilogy. Here's here's my piece. It does look pretty good. On Star Wait, Wars. I'm sorry, really quick. Have you also heard of the game they were going to make? Like the Boba Fett game they were going to make? Or like the Mandalorian game they were going to make? No. Oh my god. I have to show you, like... That may have been the one I was thinking of. Yeah, I have to show you the footage from this. It was, like... Think of, like... You've seen footage for Uncharted, right? Like, you've seen... Yeah! I, think I know. Of, yeah, think that of, was like, what it was gonna be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, that's what I was talking about. I forget about. what it's called, but yeah. It was, yeah, I've, from, I've seen It that. was basically, like, Uncharted, Nobody but Star Wars. About. Yeah. I, I don't know what the game is called. Um, it was, it, it was, was a, like, Project 13. No, it, they didn't even have yeah, a name for it. Yeah, it was 13 under... It was, like, 1313, something like that. Yeah, like, yeah. They, like, they didn't have a finalized name for it. Yeah, but it was, like... It went away. Basically, like, think of Uncharted... But yeah. a Star Wars game, and you're but a Mandalorian, I, I, and you're like I, a like a Boba Fett type character. I, I think you. I think it was. I think it was it. Was they really Mandalorian? Or was they just a bounty hunter? Because I, I thought it was supposed I, to be. Yeah, open I world. think they were just like bounty hunters. Or don't something. fuck the distinction. Or like I don't know. They had the main. I don't remember what it was. It was like uh, a Boba Fett. Here's type here's game. the thing about that. And I it looks so good. The the thing about that is, as 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 a self proclaimed proclaimed Star Wars fan nerd, I don't know the rules on Boba Fett. There, there is a race known as the Mandalorians, like like a culture known as Mandalorians from Mandalore, and there are people that wear Mandalorian armor and behave like Mandalorians, but are not Mandalorians. And so there's a weird distinction because like Mandalorians became bounty hunters because they had nothing else to do. Essentially, like they have a long history of like basically you know they got hit by a plague, they got hit by a war, like you know they used to have you know whatever. But that's like always a always a thing. So it's always like, is it a bounty hunter or is it like a? But my piece on Star Wars, my whole thing is, I love that universe. I love the worlds that are in there. I like the characters a lot. But I'm I'm like satisfied with it. I don't need more, and I don't like some of the directions they go in with some of the stuff. It's like, to me, every everything everything has an end. Everything dies. Like you know, nothing golden can stay. Like yeah. Star yeah. Wars was great. Can we just put a... Like like you said, Solo could have been any space western. Okay, restart Firefly, or like... Not even restart Firefly, oh, but just yeah. like... Just make a new fucking space thing that's not Star Wars. Why does it have to be Star Wars? Like, if you have all these stuff... Like, yeah, because just it make makes a, tickets, because it makes money. That's why I fuck... Yeah, but it's... Dude! But I know, I know, what, I know what you're saying. It, what bothers like, me is it's like, I guarantee you, if Disney just threw up a crazy sci-fi film, they're fucking Disney. People are gonna go see it. it like, yeah. I'm getting like heated. <laughs> no, but like no, but I know what you're saying. It's like it's just you're running Star Wars into the ground. It's yes, like, dude, people are they, pe- they ran it through the planet. Into people the are space. getting sick of Star Wars. Like yeah, make something different that's not Star Wars, and that's the thing. Is like every sci-fi thing, it always just ends up competing with Star Wars. Yeah, but there's Blade Runner, there's Alien, you know, like like, yeah, those like there's the, Tron. Those are like, like the darker sci-fi stories. If you try to make a fun <laughs> sci-fi movie, it's always just gonna like compete with Star Wars. Or like the newer Star Wars. It's that mindset, it? man. Yeah. It's that mindset that makes you think that way. No, like I guarantee you, like if they just made well, I'm saying that's what the public. That's what, oh, yeah. that's what I'm saying that's what like the public. I don't. I know. I'm saying like I want the something. Fuck like, the public. It's the producer. People like okay, there. I'm writing a like I'm writing a uh, like this a, is their first a, a treasure hunter film kind of right now, or I'm, I want to. And there's always that thing in the back of my mind of like people are just gonna 
compared to Indiana Jones or The Goonies or <sighs> Uncharted which, or whatever. Like, yeah, which is I dumb. Know I'm obviously I gonna make it. I don't care. Like, well, because he, here's it, a problem. But, right? Is it's like it's an aesthetic. It's almost like aesthetic choices decide the genre. Like that's not the fucking case. Like if you write a treasure hunting story that's different than Indiana Jones, the only similarity is that they're both treasure hunters. Yeah, and it's not like. Whatever. I, this is not a formulated thought, but basically I feel like people, the general public makes gross overgeneralizations based off of one commonality between things and like where you would get stuck in a rut like that. And it frustrates yeah. me that people think that way. Like, oh, the guy's got a you know, treasure hunter, Indiana Jones. You know. But then yeah. if they watch the full movie, it's probably entirely you know, it's yeah. definitely different. Whatever. We just had it yeah. out. Yeah, we just <laughs> we had just, it out. We just, we just like flipped out for a second there. I when we got on Star Wars and and I was like, oh dude, you can't you can't mention Star Wars and like, I gotta say I gotta say my piece about Star yeah. Wars. Man, fuck the MCU. All I'm talking about Star Wars. In the no, in the <laughs> words in back to the MCU in the words of the Vision, a thing doesn't last forever. No, it's, it's a, no. I'm gonna butcher it. It's a a thing isn't beautiful because it lasts. Yeah, dude, that's exactly it. Like like it, just just let it. Yeah, I mean, we can't sound like I mean, a broken about, record. Look at, like, Stranger yeah. Things now. Like, they just that's, released that's the teaser trailer that... for season four. Uh-huh. And season three just, like, ended. It just ended a couple months ago. We just got it. Um, and I, kudos to the uh, to the Duffer Brothers for, like, filming it quickly and, like, having it out. Like, yeah. having it ready. And, like, planning the shoots very well, but, like... Just watch season three. Yeah, like come give on. me some time. Give me a to, break. Let me watch some time else. to absorb it. But even that, my point in like, see, Stranger Things probably should have ended after season one. I like season two a lot. It's really good. And season there's, three is also there's, good, but I feel like it would have been better as like an anthology show because season one is absolutely perfect. There are. I need to watch it now. Season Fuck. two is really good. It has some flaws, but it's a good follow up. And then mm. season three it's is like what's going fun. On. It's like the but fucking it's pirate just like, movies. Why the Pirates of the Caribbean? I feel like I feel like yeah. I mean those are goofy dumb movies. Let's be real. But the first one was rad. I was like, whoa, zombie awesome. pirates. Yeah. And then the second one, I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. And then they make a third one. I'm like, all right. I, I'm done yeah, with this. Yeah, it's exactly <laughs> like, it. It's like the first one once, is good. Once you sc- introduced Squid Face, I was out. First one is amazing. <laughs> the second one, yeah, it's it, the second one's actually really good. It's pretty good. It, yeah. But then as, as soon as you get to like the third one and then the fourth one and then like... Also, it's like... it's like it's like Picture that as the ending. Jack's just eaten by the Kraken. I love shit. Like, kill the fucking main dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's it's right. It's so badass. Yeah. Like, I love... Like, dude, fucking... That was part of what I loved about... We talked about Mass Effect before the podcast, but part of what I loved about Mass Effect was like in the second one, you know, you can if you don't do all the like side missions for the characters, some of them fucking die. And at yeah. the end of the game, you're like, damn, I knew you for two games, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like we went through some shit. Now you're dead. Like I fucking that stuff to me. Like if, if a main, very important character gets killed or like something, it's like because. You know it's not real. You know at the end of the day everything's gonna be fine. You know it's a fucking movie, but like having like a big swing like that, especially after a lot of good build up, is such a it, like it brings the stakes up really high. And like at least for me, I get really invested. I'm like, oh yeah, fuck. like story stories are incredibly powerful. I think that's why they people. Ju- I think that's why people are just so invested. People make fun of like people a lot for getting like really invested in stuff and. Yeah, sometimes I get like heavily invested, and I dude, I everybody have to. Gets invested in something. Like yeah, we just got super invested. In yeah, like, but dude, like, I just yeah, peed my like, pants over. I have to, but you know, sometimes I feel like I have to take a step back and be like, okay, it's a movie, but like, but also I can't help it because it's like, you just, well, yeah, you just get super invested in these stories and these characters, and you they shaped who you are. Yeah, and, dude, and they you don't want you don't want people to fuck it up. You don't want to see yeah. like, people fuck it up. You don't want because yeah, you like, have your interpretation and your love for those characters. And it's like, like, like for me with Star Wars, it's like, yeah, I grew up watching the original trilogy. So it like, it has a really special nostalgic place for me. So to see it get like twisted around, I'm like, ugh, whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't care. That's what happened with, that's exactly what happened with Spider-Man where I was like, like I was so hopeful. I was like, yeah, we have, Homecoming was great. He's in the, the two Avengers movies. It's Far From awesome. Home got like a billion dollars and I'm like. We're doing good. We're going strong. And yeah. then all this shit happens, and I was really upset. 
And then I, at some point, I was just like, you know what? I just don't fucking I mean, care anymore. In, like, in the end, it's like, it's contracts. It's it's business dealings. Yeah. It's, it's like a lot, like, I feel it, like... Yeah, I put everything into perspective, being like, oh, they don't actually it's care. It's a business. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They don't actually care about Spider-Man. They don't actually care about Star Wars. It's just yeah. like, it's and, all just about money. Dude, like, they don't really care. It, the people who, like, Kevin Feige and all those creatives... They're gonna do the best that they can and make a good yeah, movie because they care about the character. Cool shit too. They're gonna make, no, they're gonna like if you know they care about the character, but it's literally like, but they're at the mercy of yeah. Disney, who obviously doesn't care. It's just yeah. it's a property. They have a they have or they're a the to make. they're at the mercy of Sony, who doesn't care. It's just a property for them. Yeah. They obviously don't understand, or like Disney with Star Wars, like they obviously don't understand like what these characters actually mean to people. And they and they don't have to. They they just need yeah. to know, all right, well if we put if we put light swords and star on it, we're good to go. Yeah. Like, there's money in that in that hole. I was gonna say something about that, uh, with like characters dying and stuff like that. Like, you know, I'm reading the Ane Aneid, Aneid, whatever it's called, and that's all about that is like, you know, there he talks Dude, about spoilers. <laughs> Yes, this thousand year old. <laughs> yes, yeah, thousand year old book. Well, dude, some people I've read. I mean, who the fuck would go out of the way to read that unless they had to for for something? But yeah, like you, yeah. <laughs> well, Aeneas is talking about the Anae Aeneas Aeneas, the future like father of Rome in this story. Like this is that's the thing is it's like these people are going to become the greatest nation that ever existed, like the greatest empire to have existed on the planet. Like they will become that one day. But before they get there, they go through the shit. Like the guy's talking about Hector who gets killed by Achilles, and it's like, he goes on for like three or four pages about what they did to Hector, and like, you get really invested in Hector, you're like, damn, like, why the fuck did Achilles kill Hector? Like, war is crazy, and it's like, you know, they spend their time with the character, and they get rid of it, like, they go, they get into a storm at one point, you know, the guy's got like a bunch of different, you know, Aeneas is like, or Aeneas, Aeneas, Aeneas. I don't know exactly remember how to say his name. He's got like a bunch of boats with him, and he loses like two of them in a storm. And it's like, well, fuck. There goes like that's my country right there is gone. Yeah. Like a bunch of men that I, you know, whatever. But like it goes even that far back of just like, how can we forget? Like like that's what's fucking compelling about a story is like this this person goes through bullshit and somehow comes out on the other end fine or they or or you you're with them for so long and then they go and you're like ah. you know catharsis i think is something that's like been totally wrenched out of entertainment it's just like people don't want to feel bad no 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 don't even let them think for a second things are going to go wrong just mm -hmm. give them what they want it's like no dude freak me out flip me flip me off like like make me uncomfortable well, <laughs> i think yeah i think Hollywood especially is going to have to change their game up. Like I, that I think all dude, the, fuck Hollywood. I we'll just make cool things and replace Hollywood. I know. I mean, seriously, I think like the streaming services and all the other things, mm -hmm. like they haven't figured out where they're like, okay, people don't want that. Like we can give them that, but we can also not give them yeah. that. Like, and so much, you know, so much indie stuff. I mean, oh yeah, there's the indie world, the indie world, the indie go go, the indie go go. <laughs> That's like a website hosting it's service. Indiegogo is like a it's a it's a crowdfunding place, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know shit about that. Yeah, Indiegogo is it's, it it's like a Kickstarter. It's like a okay. It's like a crowdfunding. We should site. get a Kickstarter going. <laughs> we should do a for, for we should do a Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's hold off on that. <laughs> no. Let's, if we even let's ever do a Kickstarter for the. For one big high five. For for Xavier. One big our, high five. No, we'll do a Kickstarter for like twenty bucks for Xavier to uh or however much they'd want for Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> to do channel art. You wanna wrap this up? Anyway, too? yeah, I was gonna say we should probably wrap soon. We're about like an hour fifteen. Yeah. Um, hour sixteen. That but that was a you know, that was a pretty we had no topics. We just kinda like we went off on anxiety for a long fucking yeah. time. Yeah. Well, we t I talked about music and then we got into. We talked about music for like a second. And then we basically talked about Star Wars and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, because music, I mean, honestly, if we want to go back to that, like that whole conversation, like, yeah, music is fucking huge in movies Blah, and everything. God. Like, anyway. <laughs> Excuse you, sir. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, no, dude, but like, you know, music is, you know, audio in general is fucking huge it's everything I yeah mean, listen to this you know listen to this oh you know what I, that i shouldn't say that 
I might be offensive to her, like, you know, to the to the hearing impaired, you know what I'm saying? Oh my God. Audio is everything. And they're just sitting there like, oh, fuck. They can't hear me, though. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, I was just going to say, how can they know that <laughs> if they can't hear? If they really can't hear. <laughs> I'm so mean. Anyway. I don't know, I'm running out of steam. Yeah, I say we wrap this up. Uh, cool, so this this was another, 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 another bowl. Talk fest. Another talk fest, another bowl of human knowledge. Pa- another bowl of human pasta. <laughs> Coming at you, to spoon in your ears. <laughs> spoon in your ears. And scoop up with your eyeballs later. <laughs> this has been Quentin Bell. This is Derek Mola. And... I'm- have a this have is, a really awkward goodbye. <laughs> yeah, have a have a have a lovely day. Have a truncated or night, whenever you're listening to this. Two folks talking over each other. Awkward goodbye. Uh, stay safe anyway, out there. Um, Lo- love yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm like. I'm trying to it's interrupt it's, uh, you. Uh, <laughs> um, stay safe out there. Love yourself. And don't be afraid to ask for help. And really, really brain out on yourself. Get really brainy and, you know, look into who you are as an individual and what you might need to li- be the best you. Phoenix. We're all looking for peace. And we're In all love. making a journey towards peace. Well, peace. peace and love. Oh, forget love. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> I don't love anything. <laughs> anyway. Derek Mola. Front of Bell, again. Signing Human out. Human Pasta. Goodbye. Good night. Good night.